joining us. This is Paul Wilson and Chris Hempke, and you're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. Uh, Chris, we are jumping into April, and I am starting to get really excited as the weather is starting to break. Yeah, spring fever's amongst us. Events that were not here in 2020 are now coming back in 2021. That's right. So uh, there's some light at the end of the tunnel for sure. UCC's coming. Uh, we're going to be talking about it a lot uh, in the coming weeks, guys. Yep. Uh, so we're really excited for that. Also, uh, I got uh, some messages back and forth uh, with our buddy Dirty Max Jack. Oh. Uh, so I think there's going to be some cool stuff coming up here in the near future. Super uh, exciting. Talking to Jack. And speaking of YouTubers, we have a couple of awesome YouTubers on today, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Denny Diesel, really big in the L5P space. Uh, Duramax Matt also. Uh, I think it's unique with these guys, and we're going to hear more as the interview goes on, but... I think about guys in the diesel industry, guys that have a name and reputation currently, and I think of these guys have been in this industry a very, very long time. Um, us at the company, for example, like if you're a Duramax guy, you know, you messed around with LB7s and then upgraded to LBZs and then, you know, LMLs came, you know, and you see there's this evolution of growth, you know, that you, you experience with these trucks. And here you have two guys, younger guys. And their start in diesel performance is honestly working with one of the most complex diesel platforms, or Duramax platforms, rather, out of all the years of Duramaxes, um, which is, it, it made me take a step back and go, wow, I'm old, we're in this industry, <laughs> we're old, we've been around the block a time or two, so it's nice to, you know, thinking about years past how I had to regain information and learn about stuff versus sure. what today's technology is. I think it's just, you know, without further ado, I think we just go right into that interview. Absolutely. Duramax, Matt, how the hell are you? Paul, what's going on, man? How are you doing? Thanks I'm doing, for having me. No problem, man. I'm doing so good. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, guys, we also have on the show Denny Diesel. Denny, how the hell are you? Good. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, uh, thanks for taking the time for starters, right, and getting on here, talk about diesels. I think what's really unique with you two is your introduction into the diesel world. So, Matt, we'll start with you. How did you get started into this, and what's some of your background with diesel altogether? I, I kind of fell into it. I uh, started watching YouTube videos, uh, you know, in my – one of my 30 something now. So I don't know, just in the last three or four years, uh, my friends had diesels around me and I, I was always awed by the, I would say the exhaust note and their ability to make a lot of power with, I, I would say not a lot of effort. And, uh, that kind of drew me to it. Started watching YouTube, went down the rabbit hole and I decided that I was just, um, you know, after following some of the guys on YouTube and seeing some of these awesome like videos out there, I was like, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go get a diesel. I've been a GM guy at heart my whole life. No one will ever change my mind. So naturally, it was a Duramax. Um, fell into the L5P. I, I guess I would say accidentally. I was going to get one at the end of the season, and GM wasn't making the LMLs anymore, and therefore I had to get my uh, you know luck of the draw with. Um, an L5P. Little did I know it was locked. So getting okay. to that maybe later. <laughs> so friends influentially uh, influenced you and in, in YouTube, which is crazy. Uh, Denny, how about you? How did, how did you get your start into diesel and what's your background? So basically growing up, all my friends had diesel pickup trucks, everything like that. I always wanted one, but my parents would not buy me one. My dad if I was not towing 30,000 pounds that I did not need a diesel. <laughs> we went out, looked at several of them, and he just couldn't get past the point of one having 100,000 miles and the price point that they were at. Right. So I saved up my money, and I went out, and I brought one. I was a, um, a Ram guy my whole life, always loved Ram. I bought a Mega Cab forever. But when I was looking to get one, I saw how easy it was to make power with the L5T. I can really just tune them up, and I already had 600 quarters power. So I figured I'd just go out and get that one. Okay. And I did, and I loved it ever since. So what's unique here, right, is your guys' introduction into diesels is off of a new platform, right, with the L5P, correct? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, Chris, I think you and I both think of it in this kind of context of, like, we've seen the evolution of the Duramax over yeah, time. Yeah. And so we we see this L5P, and we're like, Oh man, look at how far it's come! Right, right. Uh, I love talking to two guys who who were both kind of sounds like brought into diesels right at this level, yeah. and you, it, 
I think it's going to be really interesting to see their comparison 10 years from now at right. where trucks are at right, right. compared to where we're looking well, when we're 20 years into this. Well, I just... Well, know. GM isn't making diesels in uh, 10 more years, apparently, with their press release, so that, that will be interesting. Yeah, that'll be... <laughs> that, that's a topic for another day. But I, it just, it, it's crazy to me, like, Paul, being in, in the industry and doing what we do yeah. and knowing, you know, LB7s and all the, the older Duramaxes and, like, the L5P is such a unique complex platform it, it, it is simple to make power right it, it, as sure. far as what the platform can be but there's also a level of complexity there that in this era right 2021 and these these guys that we have on talking about how they got into this influence uh influences from friends and youtube well when we got into this youtube wasn't what it is now youtube no. didn't have the influencers and you know the how to's which is something both matt and denny bring to the table so it's just What's their perspective on diesel 10 years from now, like you mentioned? Yeah. But it's crazy to see how they got into diesels now compared to what it was 10 years ago and what the future looks like in 10 years on that side as well. Sure. Well, they're not an old guy. They didn't grow up reading magazines. Right. I, I did. <laughs> I did. That. That. That is old. That's Freaking old technology. <laughs> what a nerd. Um, guys, that also brings up another good point. One of the reasons we're having you guys on today is you guys both have YouTube channels that feature your L5P. Uh, so you guys have both created some sort of youtube celebrity status in this niche of l5p performance yeah. we'd love to see it i wanted to talk a little bit more about some of these things because l5p upgrades they're just starting to hit the market yeah. we're just starting to see like this what what chris and i would consider standard features for for the aftermarket world are just starting to get released to the public uh so denny i thought we would start with you uh when you first got your now you have a 2020 correct Perfect. When you first got your 2020, what were some of the highlights and lowlights of the truck? Um, so when I first got the truck, it, it was totally different from 17 through 19 trucks. Just first off, the truck's just a lot bigger in general. Um, like Parking it next to a 17 through 19 truck, it looks like a 1500 truck. It makes those trucks look so small. I just love how big the truck is and everything like that. <laughs> Okay. How about, you know, that the, the, the driving experience, you know, the windshield experience? What were some of the highlights and lowlights there? When I first got in it, like, it's just totally different in every way. Even though the interior is just a little bit upgraded, it just feels like a totally different truck with a heads-up display. I love the blind spot monitoring in the mirrors. That just makes driving the truck so much easier. Even, like, the rearview backup camera, that being a camera, that just helps your driving experience, like, ten times more. Okay. Absolutely. Now, you had had some experience with some gas vehicles before this. What did you think about things like throttle response and, and ability to pass somebody? Yeah, that's definitely there to torque with the diesels. I mean, driving it, you're never really heavy on the throttle. You just give it a little bit, and it's all right there. It's, going from a gas to a diesel, there's really no way you can ever go back to a gas vehicle. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a different feel, you know, and I, I, have, guys, I have guys that call in, you know, that came from – uh, I see it a lot in the Colorados, actually. Guys yeah. went from a V6 to to a 2.8, and they're just they're so used to one thing. You know, they've been driving a gasoline V6 for so long, and then they get into the diesel. They're like, I don't know how the the power is different, this, that, and the other. Yeah. And then the direct opposite, you go from a diesel to a gas, and all these things are gutless piles of shit. You know, <laughs> so they definitely yeah. make power differently. Yeah. I love that. Now, now, Denny, you have your truck tuned, uh, and I thought it was really interesting. I spent some time watching some of the videos. Uh, and you actually went through some struggles with getting a tune. Now, a lot of YouTubers out there would would kill all of that footage and only release it once it was yep. finally done and everything was perfect. I thought it was really unique that, that you showed some of the problems you dealt with. Can you walk our podcast listeners kind of what your experience was like tuning your truck? Yeah, first, it, it was terrible. I mean, when I first got my truck, I was so jacked up about getting it tuned. I reached out to a few people, and they said, oh, yeah, we can do it, no problem. So I went ahead, I ordered everything, I got the new ECM, got literally the whole package, just so I could do it right. I'm all about doing it once, doing it correctly. So what happened was I got the tunes, loaded them in, my truck would not start. Now, everyone's insisting that it needs to be a mobilizer relearn just because the security functions and everything like that. I went ahead, I ordered the dealer tool, the MDI-2, oh a mobilizer learn it truck would still not start. Then after talking to the tuners and the people I brought my stuff from, they came to realize that the operating software from the 17th or 19th trucks are different on the 20th. So it took my tuner a little bit of time to get that figured out. But once I got the truck, started, 
I mean, it ran really crappy. Um, it jerked every time left. Throttle just was not there because they did not have the correct fueling, like 17 through 19 or six speeds. The 2020 drives you 10 speeds. There's different fueling on every shift and things like that. But after some time, we got it dialed in, and I absolutely love the truck now. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, one of the things that's unique about you, Denny, is, is a lot of the content that you do create, you are showing the hardships. So it's the downfalls and, and, and the positives. And, you know, there's no secret to anyone that watches your channel. You have one of the first, you know, Stell 67 turbos that, you know, we had helped set you up with. And you were one of the first 2020s, right? And you you displayed some of the hardships because we're running into some actuator issues. And I was I was waiting to see some of that information drop. And, and you documented everything all time together and i actually have guys that call into the shop that reference those videos like hey do you have it fixed now and it's like well yeah denny was an early adopter in this (laughs) so for you you kind of you know once you experience that tuning side of things like what could be worse than that it's good content for you you're gonna get views from that so i mean is that also kind of some of that whole motive there that you just want to be as direct and informative and you know kind of show guys what the real world is when modifying a truck and being one of the first yeah, and that too. I mean, I like putting the issues out there because a lot of times, like when you run into an issue and you Google it or even run it through YouTube, no one even talks about it. They just right. talk about like how it got fixed or just totally skip it in general. I mean, I had so many questions about my truck that nobody even talked about posts about issues. I said, like, why not me just go out there, post all the issues I'm having? And it's actually crazy how many people have helped that, oh, I had the same issue. Here's your video, diagnose an issue, fix an issue, stuff you run into, like people with the 2020 actuators. Um, one of my buddies, his actuator actually crapped out on his L5P. Now, if he probably didn't see my video, he probably would have went ahead and ordered one. At the time, the actuators were different, and he'd be swapping over a bad actuator right. from the old road to the new one, which wouldn't work. So it's actually kind of cool on how you can help people out in that way. No, I mean, in that, we talk about what you know what youtube is and and what that that quality content is with you know google searches youtube things like that these were things when when i was getting into diesels 12 years ago the magazines never talked about any of this no you went to comp d i mean comp d didn't have <laughs> and all then, this and then, got, and then got your ass reamed for I, asking maybe the question maybe you did the i was the shit. one reaming asses all right yeah, yeah, like yeah, i was yeah, the one yeah. talking the shit you were, but you were 14 then no i wasn't yeah. i was like 16 <laughs> I was 16, and I was fucking guy, cool. Denny, do you hear this shit? <laughs> um, <laughs> Denny, Denny, now one of the things, too, like with the L5Ps, like a lot of times you ask questions and people try to ream me out and stuff like that, and they, it's really frustrating because you're actually having a physical is- issue with your truck and people are making fun of you, calling you idiot, this and that. Well, that at the end of the day, you just want to get your truck running 100%. That's the forums, Denny. Like that is, the, you know, the comp, like all joking True. aside, you know, we talk about like Comp D, Cummins Forum, Duramax Forum, this and that. The forums still have some popular to them, but a lot of those forums have shifted into Facebook, and there's all the Facebook forums, and everyone's got an opinion. Everyone loves to regurgitate other information that they read or heard from somewhere else, and people are really, really aggressive. Do you know what? Do you know what I like more about the Facebook groups than I I did about the forums, dude? I, let's hear it. No more usernames. Yeah, right. The, no. the ridiculous <laughs> usernames we used to dig out of the forums were just, yeah. bro, I'm not calling you squishy. I'm yeah. not I'm not <laughs> writing a grown man and addressing you as squishy. I well, now, hold I'm on, out. but now now you can, now if you're on YouTube and they're commenting on YouTube channels, they still have screen I know, names. we're back to it. We're back to it. <laughs> so... Um, well, well, speaking yeah, of... People uh, aren't nice on YouTube either. Yeah. No, they're... Dude, <laughs> we've had some doozies on our channel before, <laughs> let me tell you. There's there's some fans uh, out there, for sure. There are. There's some fans out there. <laughs> there well, are. Well, that's one of the things about growing a YouTube channel that I, I, I would imagine that you guys are seeing is that as you do some of the videos, you get people who pop up and, and they have nothing but, but thank yous and this was so helpful, uh, which I thought one of the ones you did, Denny, that was really smart was the GM's uh, multi-pro tailgate versus the ball hitch. Uh that's a no-brainer. We saw that happen at our shop. Yeah, we from a from a well-respected technician. Yeah, um, totally would have never thought that this would be something GM would engineer. The dentist still there to in the completely tailgate. Completely fuck you. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you? How close did you get? Now, okay, listeners, if you don't know, that is it. Just in 2020, they came out with that multi-pro tailgate. Correct. Yeah. So in 2020, the GM tailgate. If you get it folds down like a normal tailgate does, and then it folds again to create a step. Um, Correct. W- which is, is cool. It's awesome if you don't have a hitch. If you, but, right. But if you have your, your receiver on there, so right, if you actually receiver. have the ball right. hitch in, uh, that second fold will smash the top of your tailgate right into the ball hitch. 
maybe one of the dumbest things ever features ever built on a diesel. I, is it a dumb feature or is it a dumb operator, Paul? Dude, no, it's a dumb feature. I mean, I could see you, you being not, the one to do it. You should not have engineered this to be a problem. Man. Like somebody at GM should have been like, hey, what about all these guys who buy these trucks and tow with them? Paul, Won't they be fucking pissed? Paul, you would be the person to, su- to sue McDonald's for g- serving you coffee that's hot and spilling it How on you. Dare You're you. that person. I would only sue. Nah, I probably wouldn't. Um, Scum. <laughs> but, but can you talk a little bit about, about some of those problems that you ran into? Uh, what was First of all, what was the solution you found for, for the multi-pro tailgate hitch? Uh, and then how do you guys come up with some of the new content that you're putting out there? So basically with the multi-pro, there's basically just a little sensor that you can wire into the tailgate. There's just some wires that they splice into. So basically when you put your pin in, it senses that there's a hitch in the receiver and it will not let the multi-pro go down. Um, I thought when I got it, it was like one of the dumbest things, the multi-pro. I've later come to find out that the Chevys have the power up tailgate. I'd rather have that 100% you hit the button, tailgate goes up automatically. I'd rather have that one. I haven't even used my multi-pro one since I had the truck. And so I did that mod on there just so you could not put it down with the receiver. And then my one buddy one day he came over, he's looking at my truck, pressing all the buttons. He's like, why won't this one go down? It's a good thing that I have that because you would just smash my tailgate into my hitch. <laughs> so I'm really glad I got that. It already paid up for itself. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the GM's 10-speed transmission? I personally love the 10 speeds. Um, there's definitely a lot to improve upon on them, though, obviously because trans tuning is not out for them yet. Um, 17s or 19s shift like butter. They don't be fuel when they're tuned. The 20s, they shift great. They're silky smooth. I mean, I've never came and like had an issue with mine searching for gear or finding gear. Some people you talk to, they say that's an issue. With me, I've never had that. I love the way it shifts. I get great fuel economy. The only downside is like you can't tune the trans, and obviously – I'm trying to make some power and be feeling on the shift, but it's really never confused on what gear it should be in or anything like that so that I've come to notice. What? So have you, you've had some seat time now with the 67 turbo with the 10 speed, correct? Yeah. Okay. And you have from your tuner, the new switch on the fly, correct? The switch on the fly yeah. tuning. Okay. Yeah. Talk us through, you know, there's a lot of L5P guys out there, and these are some some modification upgrades that guys might be looking at. What is it like to have, like, that elite, you know, top-of-the-market upgrades right now? What does a switch on the fly do? How do you like those characteristics? And how does everything kind of come together with a good, uh, you know, variable vein upgraded turbocharger right now? I love the switch on the fly. It's so nice to be able to just turn your truck up when you want it. Before, there's so many times that, like, I wanted to be in the high tune, but it wasn't because I didn't really want to push the limitations of my transmission or anything like that. But um, even with the Stealth, it's so nice that you can just turn it up, have all the power on tap. But say you just want to be daily driving and get some good fuel mileage, you can turn it down a little bit and not be so hard on all the equipment. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Good feedback. Yeah. Um, now, Matt, you're on the call here with us, too, and you have quite a different build list going on with your truck. Can you walk our listeners through uh, everything you've modified on your L5P? Looking back, I can't even, I, I don't even remember how it all happened. It's just like one day I had a diesel, and now here I am with like 100% over injectors and S472 and a built trans. And, but uh, it seems like time's flown. But I mean, I started, I got my truck at an unusual time. Like I said earlier um, in the commentary, when I got my L5P, I, I, I was one of the first people I would say in. <laughs> I think I got like the first batch that was delivered to the dealership. So I was one of the first guys in my area to have one. And I was looking for, like, I was on, you know, Duramax tuner site and, and really custom. I was getting ready to do all these upgrades. And then I've got a lock DCM. So I kind of had to sit on the sidelines for, it took about 18 months. I think tuning really started happening in the fall of 2018, I think. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, fall of 2018, and uh, I just needed some stuff to do. So I ended up putting a Cognito lift kit on my truck, some specialty forged wheels, and that was about it until tuning came out. And then finally tuning became available. I was one of the first people. This is what actually spawned me to really go more into YouTube as soon as the tuning became available. But tuning became available, got my truck tuned from um, Motor Ops. They did a great job. And then... I kind of just, I, I thought that I wanted to be like the, the industry, like 
like the revolutionary like as soon as something comes out i want to be the one to get it i think it's going to spark interest try to get views like that, that this is my mindset so i found out that um really custom fab was working on a 300 series charger for the l5p so i started talking to some guys over there ended up coming out to uh illinois or marengo i don't even remember woodstock wherever they're located and uh had the s369 put on uh, you guys were generous enough to have me on your dyno to showcase some of those uh those figures i got a build transmission done at the same time um so that was kind of like the first power upgrade adders that i that i did uh came back home six months later jason's putting out a 400 series so it has the custom wide bridge, twisted pedestal. Like, it looked mint. Like, a lot of time and energy went into, I could tell, this kit. Um, people were, you know, some people that were testing it, other than myself, were peaking, like, a, like a 1,000 horsepower with fuel, and I'm like, I got to have it. I got to have it. So I sold my S369, bought a 472, and ended up getting 100% over injectors at the same time. And this is kind of my current setup right now, um, and it drives great. I love it. And then two guys go out and release the Stealth 67, a turbo that I've been waiting for for two years. Yeah, and Matt, just, Matt's now, literally. Now I'm, I'm literally beside myself. Like I've had off, off, you know, uh, off camera or audio conversation with Chris all the time. I'm like, what am I going to do right now? <laughs> like this is a turbo that I've been asking for for two years, and here it is. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. My plan is maybe to incorporate it somewhere somehow down the road because I I miss, even though I absolutely love my setup and it drives really good, there's something about variable geometry turbo that just, I, I miss. Like, I, I had 40,000 miles on my truck before I put the S369 on it and um, I just missed the way that it drove. And, I, you know, we'll, we'll see. Time, time will tell. That might be in the future. But, you know, why do you guys have to come out, out with it now? <laughs> perfection takes time my friend you know that that brings up a good point though because matt one of the things that i really liked about your channel is is you did more than one shopping video like a lot of guys when they're when they're deciding on a part especially in the youtube yep. channel they'll make one video hey i'm thinking about tires here's all the tires i'm thinking about go ahead and leave a comment and tell me what tires i should get right. and then the next video they've already gone out and picked the tires that they were going to pick anyways and put them on the truck uh, whereas then I caught on your channel, like uh, especially when you were considering tuning, there's quite a few options you were considering at the time. What did it feel like to go through and shop for tuning, uh, especially since you knew you wanted to be one of the first ones to get it? Oh, my gosh. It, it was crazy because at the time, I've had no diesel experience, so I've never had tuning. I've never had any anything to go off of before. Like, I never had an LVG or, you know, I, I didn't. Couldn't even tell you what Easy Link or EFI Live was, you know, or an auto cal they, they call them at the time. And here I am, got you know, got this diesel truck. I'm learning everything that I want to learn. And the only place for information is, is you know, the forums, the, the Tune Forum, or you know, whatever it wants to call them. We've already talked about how much of a uh, you know dog eat dog world it is there. So, you know, you started seeing the big names come out. Corey Willis was starting to put out tunes. Uh, Motor Ops got mentioned. CTT wasn't around at the time. They weren't they weren't brought up till. I don't know, 2020, maybe, maybe at the end of 2019. So it was really motor at, at the time for the, the, the tuning that I was looking for, it was either DPEI or motor ops and spending, you know, so you spent a couple of days just going back and forth. A couple of people had gotten their truck tuned by then, but at the end of the day, what led me to motor ops over PPI is that um, people, if not myself, I can't speak to it. I can now, but I couldn't at the time. People talked about the service, um, uh, the service that motor ops had and how, how they, they really liked their service. And at the end of the day, when I was going to jump into something that at the time cost seven, eight thousand dollars to, to, to tune your truck, I wanted a company that would, would be there. I'm not, that it would be there for me you know, should I have any issues or, or whatnot? Because, you know, you could tell at the time that this was a huge improvement, a, a huge step when HP tuners released their, you know, their unlock and everything that went around with it, that you, you're going to want a company that would be there for you and help you get through any, any trouble at the time that you're going to have. So that's, that's what ultimately made my decision. I, I guess people's recommendation based on service. There's that's, no YouTube videos. There was no, no, no one else had done it or put out content yet. Like this, 
this was it. I, I, I think I was probably one of the first dozen or two trucks in the country that probably was, was, was tuned. And I went through my fair share of problems too. Um, you know, I've got videos out there about a death light that wouldn't go away, took months. And, you know, it's part of the game, I guess. So, well, I wanted to talk to you about that as well because you also have had this kind of unique feature, like we were talking about with Denny, about about showing some of the harder problems and addressing some of the topics uh, that kind of everybody is asking but nobody is saying. Um, and, and I thought that was really cool. Um, and, and we see that I think when you're shopping for your turbos as well. And I know we've already talked about this a little bit, but but you 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 had that time there where you had the S three hundred on it, and then the four hundred comes out. You're like. I got to make the switch. I got to get the right. thousand horsepower. Um, that's a big for most guys. That that's like a big pill to swallow, especially to say like, I bought something and maybe it's not as great right. as I thought it was. Um, how do you feel the differences are between the S three sixty nine, the S four hundred? Did you make the right decision? Well, looking back now that the Stealth came out and I threw out everything that was factory, now I can't put one on without finding all the stock features. I don't know if I made the right decision, Paul. But <laughs> um, if you're looking at the decision between the, uh, you know, the 300 and the 400 kit that Jason put out over at Really Custom Fab, um, I 100% made a better decision. And I'm, I'm not – the 369s are great turbo and make great power. But I, I think the combination with the turbo and the injectors, my driving experience now is completely different than what it was with just, you know, an S369. And I, it's hard for me to distinguish – whether it was adding the fuel or just changing changing the charger because I did them both at the same time. So it was hard for me to be like, man, these injectors really help my drivability. They help, you know, fueling the turbo down lower so it's not as laggy. Like, I wish I, I had that experience, but unfortunately, you know, how, how I ended up putting things together, I, I wasn't able to take it in two steps. I did it all at once. But, I mean, it's... It, honestly, it's, it's night and day, and you know I can't wait to add even more fuel and see what that's going to do, and and go from there. But it, I made the right decision going to the S400 kit. You know, besides the way that it looks, it performs exactly how I'd like it to perform, and that's that's better than than the 369. You know, you're still missing you're still missing some of the like down low when you lose your oh. um, DDT, but you're talking about drivability you know, at that point, you know, drivability. You're, yeah. You're talking you, about you the, lose a little bit down low. you're talking about the responsiveness of the truck and you know, they're the turbos that you're talking about all make great power. You know, there's no ifs, ands or buts, but you know, to your point, like talking about something with a variable vein again, there's something to be said when you talk about a street truck and something in my eyes, street truck is quick response down low in real, real broad power band. And you know, the, these style turbos, like for me personally, I think the 400 drives nicer than the 300 on on an L5P or any of the Duramaxes. Really? Yeah, because I think. Yeah, I, the, I I agree. The the turbine wheel to aspect ratio of the exhaust housing, I think, is a better pair. It's a better match. So that turbocharger is actually going to spool a little bit more linearly, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's going to be more linear in how it responds than like what a 300 would be. Um, so even though the turbo's smaller. The turbine wheel compared to the exhaust housing is is not as proportionate or as proportional compared to like what the 400 would be. Interesting. So the housing size, you know, the aspect ratio being like, let's say it's a 0.91 AR and you have a 74 millimeter turbine in there. The turbine's fairly small for that looseness in the housing compared to an 83 millimeter uh, turbine wheel or even an 87 millimeter turbine wheel. Which I believe Mark's uh, Matt Matt's gonna have, um, you know, probably that 83 on his. So, what does the future hold for your truck? I mean, what what are we looking at next? Are are we talking thousand wheel horsepower, single S 400 turbo, breaking hearts? Are we talking a compound turbo system, street truck tow rig at a thousand horse? Like, what's that next piece of the puzzle look like for for the truck and the YouTube channel? Well. On the short term, I'm finishing up some visual stuff that's been aching, aching at me. Uh, that will be done in the next couple months, and I'll be sharing that stuff on my channel. You guys can definitely go ahead and check that out. But um, 1,000 horsepower is on the horizon, and it's not that far away. I, I plan to hit it this year. Uh, with the performance parts that are out right now, um, I, I think it's going to be on my S400. But I, I would say my ultimate 
ultimate goal, and I, I hope I can get there one day and, and you know, the, the kits come out for it, is um, I, I'd really like, like, an S488 over a Stealth 67, just, like, a sweet, sweet street truck, drives great, very snappy and responsive, um, you know, and then just, you know, tuned down to probably around, you know, 900, 1,000 horsepower, even though it'll probably do, what, all 1,200, Chris, maybe, maybe okay. even more than that, who knows. I mean, depending on what pump you have and everything like that, there's a lot of things that come into it, but the air side of things is definitely capable of that. Sure. So let me ask you guys, yeah. I'm new into Duramax, I'm new into L5P, okay? What are some of the do's and don'ts, right? I'm a novice guy. I'm just looking for a little experience. I watch you guys on YouTube. So what would you guys say are some of the do's in the L5P performance? What are some of those first steps look like? Um, I say do tune your truck. Whether you go compliant or non-compliant, I, I say it's like a mandatory Okay. For me, I wouldn't even wait for your warranty to be out. I would just go ahead and do it. It just changes the, the responsiveness and drivability of the truck. It makes it more fun. Um, you, you know, you guys, you know, Duramax, say you go compliant. Duramax has been tuning trucks for, what, 10 years or longer? Like, you guys have the experience. You know how to tune a good truck. It, it just, you, you don't even have to worry about all the, any of the emission stuff. I would say go ahead and do it. Tune okay. your truck. <laughs> I like that. Denny, like that. how about yourself? I get a lot of people, cause I have 14 wides on my truck. A lot of people come up to me and say, hey, I just brought a Duramax. I want to run some different wheels and tires. How do you clear them? What I personally did on my truck was I cranked my keys, and my truck rides like a total friggin' brick. Um, I, so I tell people, <laughs> just get the proper leveling kit so it rides nice. Don't crank your keys all the way up. And make sure you get an alignment afterwards. I learned that the hard way. I did not align my truck after I cranked keys, and I wore down my set of expensive middle paragraphers pretty quickly. Okay. Oh, no. Now, how about some of the don'ts, yeah. guys? What are some of the things that you would you know, recommend kind of shying away from as a new L5P enthusiast in this space? I mean, getting into it now, the, the, the biggest thing coming up now with the L5Ps, as you guys probably see, is the glow plug that we get. I mean, I think that stuff's a total waste. Um, a lot of people do that. Oh, I'm going to drop a glow plug in their piston, <laughs> this and that. So I just advise, like, don't do that. Just if you ever pop a glow plug code, just get it replaced. But a lot of times the dealers just take it back in and reset it. They reset it. Just replace it and just be done with it. And don't waste your time or effort on a glow plug. plug. It's no. so funny you bring that I agree up, with Daddy. That. <laughs> I I was in a meeting the other day and I was. It was we like were, two weeks ago. Yeah, two yeah, weeks ago. Yeah. And, I, and I was, we were talking about reading some stuff on the L5P pages. Impulse. And I was like, straight up, I was like, hold on. Is this a joke that I'm not getting? Like, are is this like, like way back in the day, Chris? Do you remember LB7 High Idol? Yeah, yeah. it was a rock. Yeah. The Alligator Performance used to have a, literally a rock that that they had on their website as a joke, yeah. saying like, "Hey, if you want LB7 High Idol, the only thing you're going to do is physically press down the pedal." They still had people buy it, not knowing that it was a joke. A joke. So I thought this glow plug delete kit. Paul was, was like just your like eighty-year-old grandma that was completely <laughs> lost, bringing it up in a in a marketing meeting. Yeah, like, and I'm like, "What is Paul? This? Are, you, are you stupid?" People are like, actually yeah. well. It, I, am I stupid? Well, okay, you want to know Dude, what the best part is? I didn't think anybody is? was so dumb that these they would guys, do this. These guys are going to your like local like hardware store. Like It looks like <laughs> hardware bolts, and they're charging through the ass for them. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. M- Matt. And the biggest thing, too, is people are like, oh, you're going to break them off in your cylinders. I'm like, when's the last time you've heard of someone doing that? I've not heard of one person going, coming to me personally. I mean, 10, 12-year-old trucks. I was, was going to say, 10 to 12-year-old truck, trucks sure, that have never had concern. them out, you yeah. know. But, I mean, these trucks have been through, you know, nom and back. <laughs> well, well, yeah, <laughs> you know? no. If, if you have 200,000 miles on your LB7 and you're trying to get the glow plugs out, like, chances are it's going to be a bad day. Yeah. Uh, even in your best case scenarios, it's going to be a really yeah. shitty day. But if you replace if you them, you know, uh, when they When they actually routinely. go out or routinely. Or if you have an L5P, there's absolutely no reason for it. That's such a good don't. Good job, Denny. Matt, um, how about yourself? What's a don't? What do you got? Don't get a lift pump until you absolutely need one. There's a, there is... A lot of talks going around when this all first started. L5P runs out of fuel, runs out of fuel. Up. So you saw everyone putting everyone putting lift pumps on. Well, factory lift pumps good for almost 800 horsepower. So you saw people running around on standard, just regular max effort tunes, saying that they're running out of fuel. Well, you're 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 not. Okay. So you don't you don't need a lift pump. Boom. Okay. That's a good one. I like that. Guys, uh, let's see. We're we're getting close to the end here, so there's just a few more questions I got before we wrap up today. 
Uh, number one, Denny, what's the best upgrade you did for your truck? Definitely drivability. I just did the self 67 drop in, and it literally changes the drivability of the truck so much. Um, when I first put it on, it's like rumbles so much more at idle, but up top it's so like whistly, whistles like crazy. You can't even like compare it to anything. Cause I just think it's so different in its own way, and just the power you get from that is insane. But that's like the biggest power upgrade I've done so far. But planning on doing my injectors here soon too, so that might be another one. Cool. Nice. What about you, Matt? What's the best thing you've done to your truck? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the injectors. Um, the injectors and the S472. I, I, I was, I'm extremely happy the way that my truck drives right now and handles in regards to the S369. So that's a big swing. That's a the, getting the injectors and turbo at the same time on this truck is it's big. Like opening up a whole new animal. It is yeah. like it is like going out and getting another vehicle yeah, because yeah. it's going to be totally different. Uh, so that's a good one, I, man. I, I like wish- that. I wish that, again, like, I wish that I could have done them not in tandem. Like, I wish I could have done my, like, injectors to see how it changed the drivability of the S369. I guess that's probably one of my biggest regrets right now going back is, like, I just wish it, I still would have gotten the S472 no matter what because I wanted to just be one of the guys on the street that had it first. But I wish I would have gotten the injectors, and then I would have. I would have put the turbo on. I mean, I did them both at the same time, and like I said, it, it was night and day difference. Like, I was I was blown away how different it was. Cool. And I, I don't know <laughs> which one to contribute it to more. And I feel like if I would have done the injectors before, I probably would have had a better idea. But it is what it is. That's definitely my favorite thing that I've done in my truck. I like it. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you guys are both really, really busy, and I know our listeners are going to love hearing from you. Uh, If our listeners do want to find more content from you, Denny, how can they find you? Uh, You can look me up on YouTube at Denny Diesel and same thing on Instagram at underscore Denny Diesel. All right. Matt, how about yourself? Uh, Same thing, YouTube, Duramax Matt. And uh, my Instagram is my name, Matthew S. Merrick. So you can find me on on YouTube and on Instagram. I love it. Guys, anybody you want to give a shout out to today? My mom and dad and my girlfriend, Hannah. All right. Well played, Denny. Matt, I'll, like that. Uh, Sharing yeah, any I'll love? shout-out to my wife. <laughs> my wife allows me to take time and make content when I get around to it. And then uh, my eight-month-year-old daughter, uh, huge shout-out to her. She's going to be featured on the channel as it keeps continuing to grow. <laughs> Very That's cool. That's awesome. Well, guys, uh, listeners, make sure you stick around. We have some really exciting uh, In the Shop segments coming up with our super tech, Jeremy Garnett. And, of course, we're going to be talking about some knowledge base articles at the end of the show. Make sure you stick around. All right, guys, you know I'm excited to be here to talk with our super tech, Jeremy Garnett. Jeremy, how the hell are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Guys, if you've never heard the show before, uh, we bring Jeremy on as a super tech out of Duramax Tuner's very own diesel performance shop. Uh, Jeremy, you've been working on cars forever. 20 years or so. (laughs) (laughs) Diesel trucks for a long time as well. Uh, So we thought we would give Jeremy a chance to kind of come on and tell us some cool stories about all of the stuff that you get to see on your normal day to day. So hit me with it, man. What's the truck we're talking about? Uh, This week we got a 15 LML. Oh, I love me some LMLs. 15 LML too. So this is right at the tail end of, of model years for LMLs, right? They ran 11 to 16. Uh, What were the symptoms or what was the problem that that they brought to you? Oh, this one here, uh, customers from Florida, just driving up, uh, had a big trailer on the back and he came in saying he had engine codes, emission codes, and brought it in, and he gave us a list of codes that he brought at the dealer, or yeah. he brought it to a dealer, a uh, list of codes that the dealer wrote down, and the dealer had said, okay, you need to replace the whole EGR system, uh, actuator, coolers, and the EGR itself. Not a cheap job, certainly not cheap from, from a dealership. Right. So the guy didn't like his quote and didn't like what the dealer had to say, so... He was not too far from us and was going to stay in the area for a little bit and left his truck with us. Nice. Okay. Um, Got a look at it and we got it fixed up for him. And basically, he only needed an actuator on the EGR itself that bolts to the cooler. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So so this is one we've dealt with a lot where somebody will have one cause problem and then it it increases. 
it incurs a whole host of, of codes. So somebody who first scans it is like, oh, you got the whole list of codes? We'll just replace everything. Exactly. <laughs> How much time do you spend digging into the diagnostics to, to find that root cause? Uh, a good time. And in, uh, in, in this case, actually, yes. Uh, but what, what is the main cause? Like, okay, can this code or can this cause something else? Right. Or is this not going to cause this? And we spend a lot of time. I mean, it's what we do. I mean, it's what we do here. Yeah. You know, as we try our best to give the customer the best, you know, quality <laughs> and the best job that we can without taking their paycheck, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just it, right? It's because sometimes y you look at a job like that where the dealership quotes you this astronomical fee and it's like, well, if we spend two hours really digging into this yeah. and we find out that it's something that's going to cost you a lot less, boom, that's a net savings. No question about it, right? Yep. Uh, how'd the EGR look when you tore it apart? It was beautiful. And that's... <laughs> that's one of your first indicators. Yeah. That that, well, that's... Uh, the that's whole what story's I, not there. That's what I said. I was like, you know, Jamie, our vice president, was walking through and, you know, yeah. he, he drives an LML as well. Sure. So he comes up. He's like, hey, how's this truck doing? I'm like, you got to look at this. <laughs> I'm like, so I had, I'd pulled the actuator off and... Because at that point, we already sold the customer the actuator with potential of something else may be in bad once it, it comes apart. Right. Because... You can't look inside of it when it's on the truck. So <laughs> we we did pull it apart, and I want to make sure that I didn't see coolant or I didn't see a ton of soot inside the EGR. Yeah. And the cooler itself or in the EGR. So got it apart, and I'm like, Jamie, I'm like, this truck's got 100K on. I'm like, you know, his truck's got 100K. I'm like, you got to look at this. I'm like, yeah. It, it was clean. <laughs> I, I didn't even feel like I had to, like, put air or a, any sort of solvent through it. God, that's the best, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it turned out good. Got it put back together and no codes. And we drove it for a good 60 miles or so. And the guy hasn't called back yet. That's so money. That's so good. That's like such a success story of somebody who spent a fraction of what they were told and got all of the results that they were looking for, especially with somebody like we actually generally we see the best health out of emissions equipment for guys who do tow long distances. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah. So it is interesting that that's that was the situation. Give our listeners the pro tip for the week, man. What'd you learn? Instructions before you do the job. <laughs> <laughs> like and I've done a, I've done quite a few trucks before and just uh instructions before you do the job i mean guidelines like okay you have to take this apart to take this apart just it, it sometimes reading something for five minutes might save you an hour i like that just instructions <laughs> <laughs> even when you're doing anything aftermarket parts instructions that's right so. that's right good stuff man i love that well, Jeremy, thank you so much for stopping by the show. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Uh, listeners, stick around. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about troubleshooting another real-world diesel performance problem uh, right here with one of our experts. All right, guys, and now we're here with our diesel expert, Sean Lynn, again. Sean, how the hell are you? Good. How are you, Paul? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for asking. Sean, we've been having you on the, the show for for. God, most of 2021 now. How do you feel about doing this segment? Do you do you enjoy coming down and doing this part of the show with us? Oh, yeah. I love coming down here and helping people out as best I can, and that's my job. I love it, man. Yeah. So Sean works full-time up in our customer service division. He is here specifically to help Duramax Tuner and Calibrated Power customers sort out any problems that they weren't able to figure out through the instructions or other resources. Now, Sean, I know one thing you told me before the show, there are a lot of resources for customers to find help with troubleshooting, whether they've bought our products or not. What are some of those places people can go to, to get some help uh, solving this if an expert like you isn't immediately available? Um, yeah, that's a good question, Paul. Um, we have a whole bunch of YouTube videos out there with a lot of scenarios and people run into on a daily basis, such as switch installing and such. Absolutely. Hey, switch installing, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I remember for years working on the phone, I always got this question, and I recently just saw it in one of our social media posts. Uh, somebody was asking, or somebody had said, I installed my DSP5 switch on my LBZ, cannot feel any difference in the tunes what is going on now that person was very convinced that they had not installed their tuning correctly uh but i think you had worked with them and kind of gone through some of this to really help them figure out what what is happening so can you can you help our listeners out if somebody has just installed tuning in a switch and they go to rotate the switch and they don't feel any power difference what the fuck 
Well, typically in a situation like that, the first thing we would do is uh, pull up the spade and do a data log. And one of the parameters on there lets you actually see which two number you're in. And if you rotate the switch, it should change every single time. Otherwise, it's either an improperly installed switch or something else is going on. I love that. Yeah, so that's a real common one. Uh, I know I used to deal especially on the, the LB7s because the, the harness on the LB7 is such a pain in the dick. Uh, but I know a lot of guys with LB7s used to not get the pin seated all the way when you go to do it. So to install a DSP5 switch, you have two wires that run through the hood latch release grommet. Uh, this is in your Duramax or Cummins. Um, and, and then it wires down into the actual harness that plugs into your ECM. The LB7 harness has a little bolt on it, so you actually have to get a wrench in there and, and actually back that out. And then you sync the pins into the harness. Uh, if you don't sync the pins, you're, you could install the tune all you want, but it's never going to fucking work. Mm-hmm. Now, there are other trucks that rely on some other parameters and work a little bit differently. So I know this example was an LBZ. What are some of the variations of switch troubleshooting that you deal with? Yeah, I would say for a lot of the older Duramaxes and Cummins trucks, Cummins trucks as well, um, the parameter is the same. It'll say DSP tune number or CSP for a Cummins. Right. And then if we're talking about the LMLs or the newer Ford trucks as well, then it would be uh, fuel temperature. It's typically fuel temperature number two on the LMLs and then um, one of the fuel temperatures on the Ford as well. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So those switches work a little bit differently. Those aren't technically DSP switches. Uh, they work off of more of like a, a limiting table, which is based on fuel temp or, or programmed through fuel temp. Uh, so you'd be looking for those. We should make the note the Cummins switch installs very differently than any of the Duramax or the Power Stroke switch. Yeah. The Cummins is the easiest out of all of them, and it just plugs into the OBD2 port. That's right. Hey, do we still have the test light on the back of the Cummins switch? I think we have the test light on all the switches, don't we? Yeah, there's a test light on all the back of the switches. Um, for the older Duramaxes, it's not entirely accurate, but it certainly helps narrow down if you got it plugged in right or not. That's right. Yeah, it's a, a continuity switch. We should be clear here. So, so there's a continuity test light on the back of the switches. Most of them will just say that. Uh, where if you have it plugged in properly, or at least have it have the pins all the way seated in the harness you should be able to test continuity. So in other words, make sure that there's a, a, a current running through the switch, right? Uh, that's really handy if you have installed the wires and you're about to mount the switch. And before you mount the switch, you just want to make sure, have I nailed it, right? Like, do I have this right? And that's a really good indicator there. Yeah, and the Cummins, as well as the 2.8 Duramax, um, the light typically flashes one, two, three, four, five times to let you know you're in two number one through five. That's so handy, isn't it? And that's that's one of the only ones that can do that. <laughs> now, L5P, we haven't been dealing with as many switch-on-the-fly problems or is my tune switching because the L5P switches very differently than anything else we tune. Yeah, that's definitely the easiest in terms of installation because you just load the tune and hit the button and go. Yeah, yeah. So so we use the cruise control command uh, on your steering wheel to be able to... Um, jump in and switch tunes so if you guys are looking for instructions on that you can check out duramaxtuner.com or even i think another great resource for people is go check out the knowledge base uh so that's knowledgebase.duramaxtuner.com yeah whenever somebody's stuck installing a switch we typically go over the basics and then we'll send them the um, hubspot articles that we have to help them get the switch installed properly perfect awesome sean any other tips out there for switch installs if the switch is operating properly and you still don't feel a difference in tuning, um, we generally tell people to go over 50% throttle because we try to keep the power level very similar between 1 through 5. Nice. Yeah, that, that used to be that was my, my old kind of one in the back pocket there was throw the tune switch all the way to 1, so rotate it all the way counterclockwise, give it a wide open throttle pass. Let her come down, cool off. Then you're going to throw it directly into tune five and do another wide open throttle pass. There should be a hundred, hundred and forty horsepower difference between those two tunes. You should feel that in the seat. Absolutely. Awesome, great stuff, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Paul. Hey guys, stick around. Uh, Chris is going to be right back on the show, and we're going to wrap everything up today. 
Increase the durability, line pressure, and performance of the Allison transmission in your GM 6.6 liter Duramax LML and L5P with the XDP EPC solenoid fuller plug. From the factory, the EPC solenoid increases line pressure up to 230 psi during shifting. Once the shift is complete, the pressure drops back down to 80 psi. At 80 psi of line pressure, your Allison cannot hold the added stress from aftermarket upgrades or heavy towing. The XDP EPC solenoid fooler fixes this issue by installing onto the solenoid and back into the valve body. This lets your transmission effectively operate at 230 PSI all the time. This eliminates clutch slipping, poor shifting, and extends transmission life. To find out more about the XDP EPC solenoid fooler plug, check out xdp.com or find a local dealer near you. Worldly Custom Fabrication is known for their world-class powder coating, S300, S400, traction bars, and all sorts of other just really, really cool parts for your Duramax, Cummins, and I think even a few Power Stroke parts here and there. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the 2020 GMC 2500 and 3500 Fender Flare Billet Marker Light Delete Kit. Uh, so the, these brand new L5Ps have the marker lights and a lot of guys don't like them. Just flat out, just a lot of guys are not into that look. What they would prefer to have is a color matched billet piece right there to delete that light kit and have it just look a little bit cleaner on the truck, a little bit less flashy. So it's kind of a really cool understated exterior piece um, and I think it's one of those that it's pretty easy to scan over but once you see it you're like oh I get it and I love it uh, so these will help you clean up the look of your 2020 GMC Sierra or Denali HD truck by replacing the amber fender flare marker lights with these CAD designed CNC machined billet aluminum marker light delete plates from WC fab available with machine WC fab logo or without in raw aluminum or of course but what you're all going to choose paint matching of fine texture or fine texture black powder coat to blend into the oem black plastic fender flare trap installs very very easily it's a couple of simple hand tools comes with everything that you guys are going to need to install it uh, if you are thinking about it or if you have one and you'd like to clean up the look a little bit no problem at all jump over to wcfab.com and you'll be able to find that part right away the other sponsor i wanted to talk about today is exergy performance with their background in oe development and manufacturing exergy performance brings a unique perspective to the high performance world they know what features and specifications need to be to ensure proper function they know how to produce them and they know how to verify that they're correct the verification process and the equipment that they use is very untypical of a standard diesel repair shop. It, it actually allows them to look at many more system performance characteristics beyond just the average fuel output, which is how most shops will just test it. Uh, what they test is actually from idle to full power using factory calibration points and a few points of their own uh, that they've added for the high performance market. They can fully map a set of injectors uh, and have done so for I don't know, a, a countless number of, of people out there. Uh, the guys who are running at the very top of the industry are running Exergy. The guys who are running their normal street truck are running Exergy. Every one of our employees who has a modified set of injectors is running Exergy. There's a reason that we use them time and time again. If you guys are looking for more, uh, you can check out Exergy's website, uh, but you're probably best off giving a call over to DuramaxTuner.com um, giving a call over to WC Fab, giving a call over to uh, any of their distributors who are out there. Also, if you need technical assistance and you've bought from a distributor, uh, I believe you could still reach out to Exergy if you need to. All right, guys. Um, wow, what a great show today. We had a lot of fun talking yeah. to, to Matt and to I Denny. Just, I just got to say, right, I wonder how things would have been different for myself if 10, 12 years ago, I was able to learn information just off of YouTube and Google searches versus me having to read through the magazines and get on the forums and stuff like that. Like information is so much 
easier to obtain in today's world than it was years back. Yeah, but 10 years ago, you weren't going to search any of that shit out. I mean, even if it was all there, you still would have grabbed a bucket full of wrenches and went and torn down a 12 valve. Like, You're 100%. But what so. I'm saying is, is you, know how many, you know how many hours I have on the forums, you know, from reading in the magazines and the money on the f- magazines that I was subscribed Can to years ago? Can we talk a little bit about how much we don't miss forums? I don't miss them. Uh, not I don't know. I, you know, I'll take, it, I'll take that back. I do miss forums because I think Facebook forums are total bullshit. So, like, I would much rather go on to the old... Like the OG forums, like I, I logged into Duramax forum just the other day for for work, yeah, uh, and it was like the first login on the company account in like four years yeah. or five years or something, and I I scrolled through most recent post and I was just started laughing out loud to the point that my my wife was walking by the door to like my home office yeah. and like opened the door is like what's so funny and I'm like oh my god I don't miss this at all yeah. like I was the Facebook groups moderators in facebook groups is a joke yep. like it it's it, it's, it's, it's a, a joke compared was, to the old ones but I man i don't cummins i was just on cummins forum the other day nick had actually sent me over his log and i had a couple things to do in there there were a couple really cool write-ups on some of the stealth turbo did you just admit tuning. to sharing logins yeah that, that's basically piracy oh, anyways. I'm, I'm okay with that so um it was definitely crazy cause i haven't been on on cummins forum since like 15 yeah you know so it's been five six years since i had my silver truck yeah so uh things have changed you know <laughs> navigating through everything was a little tough but uh yeah no i don't miss them there's, <laughs> the there's the a, a lot less posts man yeah 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 and hey to, to you guys out there who are still on the forums more power to you yeah, if you're yeah. if you're comfortable with that format and you're getting information there are gems hidden amongst there the is bullshit. good there is good information in any of these media outlets yeah absolutely the problem is is deciphering what's right and what's wrong and that, right. that's what's tough right Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's where today's guests like Denny and Matt, they've done a really good job at trying to consume some of this information. I think both of them are guys who went out and tried to learn and then said, you know what, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to go try this in real life. And and that's that's something that's really powerful. Uh, Also, big shout out to the other help we had on today's show, Sean Lynn and Jeremy Garnett. Uh, Really uh, Big appreciation for those guys and what they do for our show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey, guys, if you love hearing them, make sure you go on to Fans of Diesel Performance Podcast and give a shout out. And anybody who hasn't done so, we really could use some fresh five-star reviews. Uh, If if you think we're less than five stars, please email (laughs) C-E-H-M-K-E at DuramaxTuner.com and let him know why. Or And today, and for today, this has been Paul Wilson and Chris Emke. Thanks for listening. I'm old, we're in this industry, we're old, we've been around the block.